we have to start establishing this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. 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 Hello and welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Bettel alongside the head coach, Dan Marley. And coach, it's been a while uh, after the first of the year, the new year. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year. I know uh, after today's practice, you're ecstatic about the start of conference play, but we'll travel back to uh, a trip to Tucson to take on the Wildcats, a 10-point loss against one of the preeminent programs in all of college basketball. Yeah, I was uh, really proud of our guys. You know, we uh, struggled a little bit early, and that could have got away from us really quickly, but we battled back, and uh, we had it to 44-40. Uh, really battled. If we would have made a couple more shots, uh, it could have made it really interesting. But for us to go uh, to Tucson and play a, a perennial top-10 team like that and, and lose by 10 and, and, and really play hard and gamble. We lost D.C. Uh, for the second half of that game, which really hurt us. But uh, proud of our guys. I thought we competed uh, for 40 minutes. Yeah, Oscar Freire had 16, uh, Dwayne had 19 in the game, and you mentioned Darian Clark goes down with that, that shoulder injury. That, that looked like he was in severe pain, but great to see him back on the court. Yeah, it's the same shoulder he had surgery on uh, the summer before he came here, so it just popped out, went back in, and he's missed all the games since, but he's back here practicing now, so uh, he'll be another great addition to our team. We need bodies. You return back here to GC Arena for the uh, first of a four-game homestand. The first three against uh, Southwestern Athletic Conference opponents. The first one against Mississippi Valley State, a 10-point victory, 72-62. Again, Dwayne Russell seems to be at the top of the uh, scoring chart. 22 points in the game. Jared chipped in. Fifi also with 13 points in that game. Yeah, and you know every game we're playing is going to be really hard. Uh, uh, it was good to get back home. Um, a great crowd, even though the students aren't, aren't here, and uh, you know they do a good job of filling this place. But uh, played the zone against us, and I thought we did a good job of really spreading the ball around. Dwayne was uh, was great again, but uh, we're going to have to ground that, grind out most of our wins. And uh, you know after a disappointing uh, loss at. at Arizona, we came back and got a much needed home win. Do you think that you guys are playing a lot better against the zone? Yeah, I mean, I thought, you know, last year we were pretty good against the zone. Anytime we win 27 games, we we're good. And, and this year we just, uh, we, we just, we got to make shots. And, you know, we don't have a whole lot of bodies, and most of our shooters are on the bench sitting next to me. So uh, it just comes down to guys making shots, moving the ball, uh, attacking the basket. And then uh, you followed that up with another SWAC opponent. Alcorn State comes in and another 10 point victory, 63 53. Deontay Vernon had a double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds in that game. Dwayne leading the way with 27 points. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Another team that played a lot of zone, and we just grinded out a win. That was a team that played hard. And, uh, you know, Alcorn State is a team that uh, plays a, on a lot of different road uh, venues. They, they get out and they play a lot of high majors at different places. So uh, we knew they were going to come in and give us their best shot. And then uh, finishing up another team coming in that was finishing up in a pretty extended road trip was Arkansas Pine Bluff. And here's a game that you kind of love to, to have, at least a couple of during the season 89 49 you guys blew them out 31 points in the game for Dwayne Shaq Carr and Oscar at 18 points apiece yeah that surprised me a little bit I thought that was going to be a tougher game they had a matchup zone and uh, we just came out and really moved the ball well shot the ball extremely well and jumped on them from the beginning and just kind of piled it on so you know as you mentioned we were able to get some guys in some walk-ons who worked extremely hard in practice and they got to see some time so you finished up the the three wins against the SWAC opponents and then you welcome in the first of two matchups against Big West Conference opponents and that being uh, Cal Poly. You closed out the homestand. You uh, finished with a 71-64 victory. Dwayne again at the top of the uh, scoring chart. 25 points in the game. Keontae had 13 while Shaq followed up with 10. Yeah, you're really testing my memory here. Uh, I know. Uh, in that game, I do believe that you know Dwayne uh, got to the free throw line a lot. Yeah. Uh, was very aggressive. Um, got to the line, especially in the second half. Uh, but that was another game. But Cal Poly is a really good team that's uh, well coached. I knew they were going to play hard. Uh, and we just found a way to grind that one out too. And Dwayne was huge, and we had some other guys step up. Keontae did a good job, but uh, you know the free throw line was big for us in that game, where Dwayne stepped up and made some big shots. Yeah, 20 of 32 from the free throw line. 12 of 17 was Dwayne at the, at the free throw line. Coach got a little. The uh, coach Calero got a little uh, heated there at the end, and, and it provided Dwayne uh, the pressure there to hit some buckets that kind of separated you guys. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's it was a you know closely heated our uh, you know contest the whole way, and he didn't like some of the calls, just like I don't like most of the calls, and uh, he had some words for the refs, and uh, you know sent us to line. The game was over pretty right. much at that time. There wasn't a whole lot of time left, but it did allow Dwayne to get to the free throw a couple more times. You mentioned the crowds here at GC Arena as you closed out the four-game homestand. The students aren't on campus, and the crowds have still been phenomenal. I mean, Unbelievable. Yeah, over six thousand. 
uh, people in here. It's true home court advantage, and you don't find that almost anywhere, especially when the students are, are not on campus and out on break. So uh, this university does a great job of, of making sure these uh, the, the seats are full, and our guys really appreciate it. And then it was a road trip to UC Riverside to close out 2016 on December 31st, and I'm sure this is one that you want to. Well, I think everything. Talk away. Yeah, everything kind of caught up to us. A short bench, uh, not having a lot of bodies. Uh, Dwayne had an awful night, four for 25, couldn't make a shot. Uh, Oscar couldn't make a shot. I thought uh, Kerwin and Keontae played well. Uh, but that was about it. For some reason, we didn't have it. We didn't guard. Uh, we didn't do anything. And it's probably one of the worst performances uh, uh, I've seen from a Lope team since I've been here. And it was disappointing because we haven't had any uh, true road victories yet. We've won some neutral site games, and I was looking forward to going on the road and, and testing our medal uh, because we're going to have some tough uh, whack games coming up on the road. So disappointed in that. Um, Ten and five sounds a whole lot better than nine and six, but. Uh, thankfully, we've been home now, and we're getting some healthy bodies, and we've been able to practice here for a couple days, and got to get ready for uh, Utah Valley. Yeah, let's mention the healthy bodies. Josh Braun brought practice, and great to see, and then Darian Clark also on the court. Yeah, they've both been cleared, and they've had two good practices. Uh, just gonna have to go slow with Josh and Darian. Josh is still kind of hobbling around out there, but it's it's good to see him back out there because he can make some shots. Yep, no doubt about it. We are just getting started with the Dan Marley Show. Stick around. Chuck Carr will be with us after this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Shaq Carr from the Lopes men's basketball team. Shaq, thanks for joining us on the show. A newcomer here to uh, GCU and to GCU Arena and this uh, Dan Marley-led squad from Southern Idaho. Talk a little bit about the transition from Southern Idaho to GCU. Um, it was a pretty big transition. You know, uh, different pace, different speeds. It's, it's, it's a big transition, but coming here to play with Dan Marley, it's, it's, it was a great opportunity. I think it was a good fit for me. Is it is it just a huge leap as far as just the and what is it? Is it the speed of the game, the quality of the player, the quality of the opponent? Uh, I think it's the quality of the opponent. Opponent uh, at the JUCO level, you get, you come across a couple good guys, yeah. but at the next level, D1 level, you everybody's good. So you got to bring your A game every day. I would assume that you found out about GCU from Keontae Vernon, who also came from the Golden Eagles. Uh, GCU, uh, they were actually recruiting Keontae his what freshman year at uh, CSI. So as they were recruiting him, I talked to TJ okay. a little bit every once in a while. Then when I found out Keontae was going there, that just made me look into it a little more because I'm pretty close with Keontae, so uh, yeah. And with, with Southern Idaho, obviously you were on the court you were the, the floor general. The role here is Dwayne's kind of the general. But you've been pacing your way, not only points, and we'll talk about some of your performances, but the assists, uh, which you also had at Southern Idaho, but certainly something that shined here with GCU in, in that capacity. Uh, yeah, I'm a pass first point guard. I always look for my teammates to, so they can get ways to score. Uh, with Wayne being the floor general, uh, I kind of love that. That way he can get his points, I can get my assists, and we're both happy, so Sweet. yeah. How was it though when Dwayne couldn't play the first two games? The team travels to Cameron Indoor Stadium. Here you are, your first game as a as a lope, and it's against Duke. Uh, it was a great experience, you know. Uh, I always wanted to play at Duke growing up as a kid, so it was a great experience. Unfortunately, Wayne couldn't play, but like I said, it's a great experience. gave me gave me a chance to get the flow of everything. But yeah, it was a great experience. I talked to you after the game, and even throughout the course of the game, you maybe you were hiding it, but you seemed really poised. You seemed cool. I mean, 18 points yeah. in the game—that's not a bad uh, performance. Uh, I like big games. Uh, yeah. You 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 you'll come to realize that later on in the season that I like big games, and big games is games I want to play in. Well, big games like Louisville and a big game here against San Diego State was a victory. The crowds here, can you talk a little bit about that as well, the atmosphere and playing in front of these fans? These fans are unbelievable. I've never played in front of an atmosphere like this a day in my life. So so for me to be able to play in front of this atmosphere, it's a blessing and I just love it. That, that just makes us perform every day for them. What's uh, Coach Marley, what are the, uh, the team saying about the start of conference play? Mm -hmm. Whenever it does start, there always seems to be kind of a, a ratcheting up of intensity, isn't there? Uh, well, lately we've been getting after in practice. Like you said, uh, conference is getting ready to start. One thing on um, uh, Coach Marley's mind is win the whack. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple, win the whack. What's it like being uh, coached by a guy that played in the NBA and has the fire and intensity of uh, Coach uh, Marley? It's hard and it's great at the same time. Yeah. You know, you, you, you got to obey by his, all his rules, but at the end of the day, he knows more than a lot, a lot more than we do. Mm -hmm. So 
for us to play for an NBA guy like him himself is is, is great. You found success early on. You were at Canyon Springs, right, in in, uh, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. You went 20 and one as a, as a senior starter with the team. You had the league championship 2014. You guys uh, were second overall in the state. So you you seem to kind of relish success, mm -hmm. and you found it early on, even in high school. Uh, yeah, my high school senior year, it was a big year for us. Uh, we had a rough time my junior and sophomore year. So senior year, we were all on the same page. We all just wanted wanted to win a state championship. Unfortunately, we didn't, but. We was able to come out with a league championship and, and to go 21, which is pretty big in Las Vegas. The bench recently has been cut really short with the injuries with, with Josh and and with Jerry and Clark, but it's great, you know, looking back behind us during practice and we, we see both of them returning. That's got to be a big boost now that you start conference play. Oh, it's a, it's a huge boost. Uh, JB and Darian Clark, they are big asset aspect to the team so it's going to be great having them back on the court with with the guys that we have now but it's, it's, it's going to be great well good luck to you this the rest of the way we look yes, forward sir. now you gave us a little bit of hint that the big games are the ones that you enjoy so yes, uh, new mexico state's coming here and, yeah. and it all gets started tonight against utah valley thank you so much yes, sir. Have jack a carr joined to stay with us more of the dan marley show continues as we roll along here after this timeout Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the men's volleyball program here at GCU, Matt Worley. And Matt, thanks for joining us. Now the full-time head coach after uh, having the interim tag placed on you last year. What's the transition like knowing that it's your, your job? It's uh, definitely, you know, there's some job security there yeah. with it. But uh, I was juggling a two-year community college uh, position, coaching women. So I was actually kind of double dipping in a sense from one job to the next. And it's just great to be in this position now without any other worry. So I'm 100% dedicated to, you know, the diving so deep into scouting reports and just sticking around campus long nights and, you know, chatting with the guys and making sure that we're all on the same page and they know their roles and, you know, that we're progressing at the fastest pace possible. Now you were able to also have a recruiting season. What was that like as you went out and tried to find the best athletes? You know, they didn't remove the interim tag until about April of last year. You know, so it was a little bit tough really recruiting and saying, hey, I'm going to be the guy here next year mm -hmm. as much as I wanted to be, you know, going through the recruiting process. It was interesting to say, hey, you know, I might be here, I might not. Um, but what I tried to do was just sell the school right. and sell, uh, you know, the progress that is happening on campus and how great of a place it is. So the school does sell itself, but, you know, we're still working against some things in terms of uh, program history. And the program history needs to just get a little bit stronger. And, you know, that's kind of our biggest downfall right now with the recruiting game. You also brought in a couple of new coaches uh, to join your staff and Troy and AJ. Can you talk about what they bring to your team? Yeah, you know, uh, it's nice to have the ability to uh, have administration trust me with my decisions of who I'm hiring. Mm -hmm. And Troy and I have known each other for about six years now. He's uh, born and raised in Arizona. He coached at Boulder Creek High School, which is about 30 minutes north, comes off of two state championships. He also was a teacher. He was a high school teacher. So what he does, uh, you know, behind the scenes with giving the guys certain readings and there's certain mental developments outside of just skill that Troy really, really, uh, you know, succeeds with. AJ uh, has done some phenomenal things in terms of his playing, playing career. He's finally kind of you know, hung up the shoes and is now coaching. And he's just a wonderful guy to have in the gym. His passion and the emotion behind what he does is, is just great. And the guys immediately respect him just from what he's done in terms of playing. Feed off his energy, no doubt. You, when we talk about recruiting and, and trying to get the best quality athlete to join your team, you. You go up against some pretty big powerhouses when you talk about Ohio State, Hawaii, Lewis, and Loyola, Chicago, where a majority of those athletes are definitely gravitating towards. Mm -hmm. That's obviously got to be a, a tall test, especially early on in your tenure. Sure. You know, we, you know, as I kind of mentioned, we still don't have much of a history to this program. And being a new staff, too, we have to prove ourselves. And initially it might be a little tough to grab some guys that are current uh current seniors which we kind of saw some struggles with this year so we're going a little bit more of a foreign route so we have a couple foreigners coming next year that we're really excited about and also 
you know, a couple other guys we have signed. We do have a libero coming in from Hawaii who's uh, done some really nice things in the past few years. There's also a local outside, a 6-7 outside from Arizona. So we want to stay as local if we can just because we want it to, we want a program to create this sense of community. You know, just as you said, the, the top recruits are coming from Southern California and Chicago. Right. So they're going right. to want to stay home, you know, sometimes. So we want to get the guys to stay home too. Well, 10 of the 22 are, are new faces. Obviously with that, you can maybe help indoctrinate your your culture the sure. way that you want this team to to be and and how they want to be presented uh obviously that could be an asset correct yeah of course so I, we actually graduated six last year uh, lost a couple guys along the way that really weren't kind of buying into what we were doing and just the change of faces mm -hmm. of the coaching staff to our strength coach to our athletic trainer to the 10 new guys on the roster it's made this change of culture a little bit easier but still, changing a culture is never easy. Right. It's just we've been lucky and fortunate enough that some of those the timing thing, timing of things has kind of fallen our way. Now we mentioned, you know, not only recruiting is difficult, but what about some of the opponents coming up? You've got Ohio State coming in here, mm -hmm. uh, the champs coming in here. You've got Lewis, Hawaii, UC Irvine, Loyola, Chicago, Ball State. Uh, you're not shying away from some of the best teams in the country. No, you know, this is uh, this is definitely the toughest strength of schedule that we've seen in the eight years of this program. Uh, we're not we're not afraid of anyone you know volleyball is such an interesting sport that any given night anyone can win you know what we what we do have of you know the struggles of so many new guys it's helped us create this new culture but also getting on the same page of you know philosophies and strategies moving forward you know Ohio State being the defending national championship they're returning everyone and huh. that's a that's definitely a tall order but you know across the board there are some uh some losses, some big losses for certain teams of, of, of personnel, and we have, I mean, we're excited about it. We're not, we're definitely not, uh, definitely not shying away from the competition. Well, you travel, uh, it starts pretty quickly. You go to do uh, UC Irvine, then San Diego, then uh, a tough trip to, to Hawaii for a couple of games, but back here for the uh, home opener against Lindenwood, January 20th, 6 p.m. Should be a great season. Best of luck to you and your Appreciate staff. It. Thank you so much. Thanks, Matt Worley, head coach of the GCU men's volleyball team here at GCU. Stay with us. More of the Dan Marley Show continues right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Well, if you've been here to GCU Arena for a men's basketball game, you've no doubt seen and heard them. They're the GCU Havocs. But you may not know what goes into creating the biggest party in college basketball. The thing that has turned GCU's basketball and athletics experience into something so incredibly special so fast, hands down, is the collaboration that the student section, the school, the cheer team, the band, the dance, and all of athletics uses together and is involved in. It's absolutely unbelievable the kind of support and collaboration that goes on here, and I don't think people really see how many people truly are involved in making this thing special, and it's really a pretty cool thing on campus. Being a part of a team that works so well with cheer, band, and dance is huge. And not to mention the Havocs are the most important part of game day. They're the ones who bring the atmosphere and we just help create that. All four of us work as a family. We've done performances together, which has been so awesome. And just overall, I've never seen a program that works so well with one another. I like to think of the Havocs cheer band and dance as the Fantastic Four because we all collaborate so well together and without it, it wouldn't be the experience that it is. We're all working so hard that we make that arena the loudest and the most entertaining that it possibly can. And we all get along so well that it makes it an easy and a fun job. I think my favorite part is just seeing everyone in like my section and in the band in general just get so into it. Like they will just be such a quiet person and then once it's like time for the game, everyone just goes crazy and like once it's a purple pregame party, everyone's dancing and cheering and then yelling at the game and just getting so into it and I just think that it's awesome that not only are we getting into it, but we're helping all the other students and all the season ticket holders get involved and just get so excited and love the game. Louisville and San Diego State coming here was a really big deal for all of the GCU atmosphere. Uh, it was unbelievable seeing the support and the madhouse that was the GCU arena on that Saturday and Wednesday. Uh, the Louisville game, 
we, it was probably the loudest the arena has ever been. And then four days later, the San Diego State game got even louder and it was, it was unreal. Probably, probably my favorite experience in college so far. We have a job that we have to do, but we're also enjoying doing it while we are performing and playing well and we all work together to make sure that we're putting on the best possible show that we can. And I'm just so blessed to be a leader and help out in something so awesome. And just to see the outcome in the games and when we hear other coaches complimenting, you know, all cheer band dance and havoc, like it's really awesome to know that we are a part of it and we made it really special. Second thing I want to say, this in college basketball in my 40 plus years was the toughest crowd we, I've ever faced. You got something special here, really special. Whether we go to Duke, Kentucky, and nothing, nothing was as tough as that environment tonight. Just really, really impressed with what you have here. You're gonna, in, in, as soon as you get eligible for this tournament, you're gonna have something really, really special. When opposing coaches compliment in the student section, it's pretty cool to see because they don't have to do that by any means. And to see what Rick Pitino said about the Havoc, saying that our atmosphere is the most hostile atmosphere he's seen in 40 years. And then Sean Miller complimenting our entire basketball program and our school in general. It means a lot. Just so cool to watch the whole entire arena stand and just jumping up and down. All the different entertainment between band, cheer, dance, and Havocs. Just full of tennis school spirit and we always hope we win. Personally, I think this is the most exciting game that you can watch. Um, whether you're watching it on TV or whether you're here in the arena, there's nothing like it. There's nothing louder. There's nothing more exciting. Every part of our game is a production. Everything is scheduled out so that each time out, we're on the court as soon as that buzzer goes so that the people are entertained, the students stay excited. Um, it's all choreographed and a lot of hard work has been put into it so that every person that comes here is entertained and they leave that arena saying, wow, there's something special going on there. Last year, the Lopes only lost one conference game here at GCU Arena, and with WAC play starting tonight, no doubt the Havocs will play a huge role in their success again this season. Stay with us, more of the Dan Marley Show continues after we take this time out. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Time to wrap things up with the head coach Dan Marley and this uh, show broadcast right after the Utah Valley matchup to begin with Western Athletic Conference play and Mark Pope brings in a team. Boy, he's got a lot of transfers. You look at their scoring sheet, the Toulson was a junior college uh, MVP in their national championship game. They've got players from BYU, Xavier. Uh, this is a tall test right off the bat. Yeah, right they're really the they're really good. Uh, he's done a great job uh, for them. They got some guys that've been at some high majors and are come in and they uh, a very potent offensive team, score a lot of points, like to get out and run and push it. Uh, so it's going to be a great test. They got four guys that just spread the floor and shoot it, and a big guy down there can step out and post up. Um, but this is going to be a true test for us. Uh, the WAC is a lot better this year from top to bottom. Uh, Utah Valley is one of those teams that's really made a step, and as I said, they can really score it. Um, you know, last year we beat them twice. Josh had 34 and 30 in, in the two games, so we're going to need some more performances out of him uh, to try to take a little bit off of Dwayne's plate. And then a quick note about then you travel to the road. You go to New Mexico State and UTRGV. New Mexico State's been on a roll with their first year head coach. Yeah, they're doing really good. Uh, coach Weir is, you know, he's been there forever. Yeah. He was the uh, associate head coach, so he's just stepped in and I think they're off to a 13 2 start, which is the best uh, in their in their career. So uh, it's going to be another great test. They're a really good team that's uh, flying high right now. All right, coach, good luck. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thanks so much to the head coach Dan Marley, and thanks to you for tuning into the Dan Marley Show.